the cloud. Great. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Jage. Goodness. Hello, everybody. So nice to see you all. Wow, this is great. Chris, could could I make you a co-host just so in case I miss somebody coming in, you could let them in? Okay, great. That just helps me to think about less things. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, great. So let's begin with our bracha. Um, and as I was saying, Torah is, it's many things. Uh, and tonight it's the learning about how it is that we live Jewishly, in particular uh, in relationship to Shabbat. So join me in whatever language you'd like, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get in here together. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kishanu B'Mitzvah Tav B'Tzivanu, La'asot B'Divrei Torah. Awesome. Great. And um, some of the folks know each other here from our um, introdu introduction to Judaism class, and some folks are new. So I thought we would just start tonight with a quick circle around um, among us of what is an ideal Shabbat for you, whether you do it or not, uh, what sort of would captivate your sense of Shabbat. Um, and it could be, you know, as I said, an aspiration, it could be something that you already do, but what is one element that would make it, uh, you would know it's Shabbat because it happened or you were there or you ate it or you felt it. Um, what is one element of Shabbat that, that you would strive to experience? For me, it's the candle lighting. Nice. And what specifically, John, about candle lighting kind of does it for you? Oops, we can't hear you. There we go. The experience of, uh, it's a ritual experience of covering your eyes yeah. and opening up to a new world. And that's what you get to have. It's you, you can't you can't it's one of those things you can't know unless you experience it. I love that opening up to a new world. That's beautiful. Great. Who else? I can see Craig talking, but I can't hear your voice. You're muted. There we go. All right. So mine is not as spiritual. It's uh, the food. It's the dinner. It's the uh, matzo ball soup. Uh, it's the it's salmon. Food. It's the challah and it's potatoes. the potatoes and it's okay. the asparagus. Yeah. <laughs> I love it's it. Our, our weekly ritual meal. That's amazing. And you always have that on Shabbat. Uh -huh. Yes. Beautiful. Are they recipes from someone or some place or just? No, just, just recipes, stuff that we've done. We've always done when the kids were young and they were home and uh, yeah. when they come to visit, it's just, yeah, you know, but uh, I grew up in a very secular household. So uh, we didn't observe uh, holidays or we observed multiple holidays. So uh, when Craig and I got married, we started our tradition of you know, doing Shabbat and um, you know, other traditions. So Beautiful. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah and I, I would say also the candle lighting, the prayers, you know, just starting um, Friday night, uh, the whole uh, ritual of, of bringing in Shabbat. Beautiful. Yeah beautiful and the, the resonance with having shared that experience with your kids I think is really it's an amazing trajectory to then kind of recall even when they're not there to have the right. same meal and 
um, everyone's connected. I wonder if they're having salmon and asparagus at yeah. their house. Mm -hmm. But they do, it, yeah, they do. They tell us that they try, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's palpable. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Been great. Anybody else? I appreciate well, yeah. out there out there the dream thing the dream thing is to actually be able to have Shabbat with other people one day so we can just hope that COVID calms down enough beautiful change yeah community thank you and Barry oh, oh Barry and then Janine I appreciate the absence of work yeah 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 the pause just the the quieting down Yep, powerful. Great, we're gonna look at that definition of work in just a moment. Janine. Um, like several people have said, candle lighting is important. And I actually have my grandmother's candlestick, so it, it just takes me back. And um, what I'm really, how can I say? What I'm trying more and more to incorporate for Shabbat is um, a um, what the technology free day. Like I really put my phone off and keep it to a minimum. I'm not perfect. I'm really, but I, I, I really feel I, I don't watch TV. I don't check my email. I don't check the news. And to have that kind of freedom is, um, or rest is, is really wonderful. So I, I but it's a, a work in progress. As I say, I'm not perfect at it, but I'm really striving. So, so that's important to me. Yeah, and I would say we're, we're never done with Shabbat. Shabbat's never done with us. You know, it's the, it is really a kind of, uh, petri dish almost an experiment of uh our jewish lives over a lifetime right uh, right you know shabbat at age 20 looks very different perhaps than shabbat at age 60 you know 102 or whatever it might be Absolutely. yeah so let's dive in a little bit um and we can hear from other folks along the way but i want to um kind of maximize our, our learning and our sharing. Um, so then I apologize, I'm a little sniffly as you can probably hear, um, navigating a little bit of a, of a cold, but I wanted to, I didn't wanna miss this. Um, so let me find our, I put in the chat our, um, the handout that you're welcome to print or, or do whatever you'd like with. It's a really wonderful uh, kind of compilation of sources that we're gonna look at in, in just a few minutes together. But first, um, I wanna just back up a little bit or zoom out, I would say, and um, share with you just kind of some foundational uh, information. So, um, and I should say these slides and the handouts are um, produced by the Miller Introduction to Judaism out of Los Angeles at, at the American Jewish University. And they have just amazing resources. So I'm going to be kind of um, a curated kind of a, a presentation to walk, walk together with you through. Um, and I thought we would start with... Uh, these this image of the Ten Commandments. And um, what we see here is that there's only one ritual in all of the Ten Commandments. The other are sort of uh, actions, but not necessarily rituals. And um, what's interesting is that there are two versions of the Ten Commandments um, in the Torah. Did anybody know that, by the way? Some of you, yes, good. So they are all, the 10 commandments are the same in both versions, except for two words. Does anybody know what they are? Remember and observe. 
great. I felt like we were just on a game show for a minute. <laughs> Jage pressed the buzzer. Yeah, great. And, and it's right here. So um, Zahor is to remember. And then in the other set of commandments, uh, it is Shamor to guard. So let's just do um, a little bit of a read through of these two distinct sources, just so that we know what we're kind of relating to. So first I'll just pause to just check in. So does that land for everybody that of, of the 10 commandments, there is this distinction of these two words, both related to Shabbat of Shamor and Zahor of guard and remember or keep and remember. So that's what we're going to look at in the, these two, uh, these two sources. So here we'll see in Exodus, it says to remember, and then in Deuteronomy to guard. So does somebody want to just read through the Exodus text? No, you just passed it right there. There we go. Yes. Is you looking a for a volunteer? Yes, that would be uh, great. I'll do Exodus, okay? Great. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any manner of work, not you, not your son, not your daughter, not your manservant, not your maidservant, not your cattle, not the stranger that is within your gates. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Awesome. Um, great. Oh, Mine, just, I guess I read one that's a little different. Than, yeah, I was just looking. I was like, Right, but but it's just a different. Um, it's the PDF that that was sent around. Great, so. great, great. Yeah, so as you can see, different translations of the same text. Um, so, what do you notice here in the Exodus text? What stands out to you? Not working and everybody. <laughs> yeah, not working and everybody, including the our servants, our animals, and our strangers who are uh, likely not Jewish. So everybody is supposed to just relax and, or maybe not relax, but just not work. Yeah, it was, it was, but in another area, it also includes the slaves. Yes. Yeah. And, and it uh, says we can't have a Shabbos goy, but I think people do anyway. Yes. It also says uh, that we're not supposed to uh, have anybody work for us, whether or not we pay them or not. Um, <coughs> excuse me, John, you said um, to not have our, to not have slaves. What is what would you say would be the radical implication of that? I just gave you a clue. You know, what I said is to not they don't work either. Right, right. Sorry, so it's not in it's not in Exodus, but it, it does show up. But they need to be included. Right, and and that's where uh, it's your servants. That's where uh, that reference is uh, connected. Yeah, so it really meant that anybody uh, and everybody was had a day of rest, which was a radical uh, kind of um, departure from the everyday when you would think that people needed to work every day to uh, to make to make things happen. And here it says that even um, even our servants and our animals, right? They weren't plowing the fields. They weren't harvesting. None of that was happening on Shabbat. 
Okay, and then the Deuteronomy text, who would like to read this one? I'll read that one. Guard the Shabbat day to sanctify it. Adonai, your God, is commanded. Six days you will work and do all your labor. The seventh day is the Sabbath for Adonai, your God. Don't do any labor on it. Neither you, nor your sons, nor your daughters, your servants, your bulls, or donkeys, or any of your animals, nor the strangers who reside within your gates, in order that your servants shall rest as you do. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and that Adonai, your God, took you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. And that is why Adonai, your God, has commanded you to make Shabbat. Great, awesome, John. And um, what do you notice that isn't in this Deuteronomy text that was in the Exodus? In the Exodus one, it talks of creation. Right, exactly. And, and in this one, it references being slaves in Egypt. So there's a, a difference, yeah. And what do you what do you make of that, Janine? Um, it could be anything. What do you make well, of it today? I, I the first one, I I related to that Shabbat relates to creation. Yeah. That you know that that creation took place in six days and on the seventh, God rested, and that's not referenced. And um, this is talking up in Deuteronomy, it's talking about um, because God took the Israelites out of Egypt, that that's, it's relating that to Shabbat. And so yeah. it's a, a different focus. And, and, um, and then there's the different focus on remember and guard. Um. Right. I think that's really well said. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if we look here, um, the remember is related to the Exodus. And guard. And guard is related to Ex the, Ex or sorry, remember is related to creation. And uh, guard is related to the exodus. It's one way of thinking about it. Um, I am looking in the PDF because I'm curious if they put a copy of the Kiddush. Yeah, so if you turn to, we're going to flip a little bit because there's, well, let me just show you two other things in this um, in this uh, conversation, in this slide deck, because it's, I think, relevant to uh, what Barry said in terms of work, um, right? So here's the kind of Venn diagram between the Exodus text and the Deuteronomy. And um, what is the common factor is, of course, Shabbat. Um, but this is the... Um, this is another way of thinking about, you know, to guard as in the don'ts and to remember as in the do's. And then um, it's interesting to, <coughs> excuse me, to look. Uh, this is a great slide that I can't not show. <laughs> this is just so cool. Um, if you've seen the Big Lebowski, Chris, you're loving this. Would you like to uh, act this out, Chris, <laughs> to read it? Hmm. I guess there's a, there's a lot of intentional uh, <laughs> words in there for you to. Um, I told those Fs down at the lead <laughs> office a thousand times that I don't, I, I, I have to yell it out. I don't roll on Shabbos. What Shabbos? Saturday, Donnie, is Shabbos, the Jewish day of rest. That means that I don't work. I don't get in a car. I don't ride in a car. I don't pick up the phone. I don't turn on the oven. And I sure as 
<laughs> so effing roll, show Marcia. <laughs> so um, have you all seen the big Lebowski? I'm guessing. It's it like definitely see it this weekend if you haven't. Janine, have you seen it? No. No, it's hilarious. It's one it gets of those better every time you see it too. It's like a cult classic. Yeah. Um, but it's uh and just the portrayal of you know what does Shabbos mean to us gets very personal. Um, depending on what you do or don't do in your life, you know, and it could look like all sorts of things. Um, so what is this idea of uh, working? And, and what is that, you know, if we kind of zoom in on just the word work, what does that mean? And um, uh, the word in Hebrew is melacha. And what it is, is basically creative things. We don't create on Shabbat. Um, the only thing we create is, does anybody know? Babies. <laughs> it's the only thing we create on Shabbat. Um, it's like an extra mitzvah to uh, make love on Shabbat. And um, the idea of work um, can be broken down into 39 categories. Mm. And what's cool to think about is that these are all, well, you tell me, what, what do these all have in common? Agriculturally related. Definitely. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that, John? Well, it, those were agrarian societies. That's, that's where these... Uh, forbidden Melachite came from. Exactly. Yeah. This was reflective of our life. Uh, then these are the actions that we were doing. This was our, the equivalent of bowling um, of what we did. What else do you make of the kind of common denominator of these verbs? Um, they're all like physical action. Yeah, very physical. They yeah. change the environment. I love that. Yeah, they change the environment. Say more, because I think that's fascinating. Um, that um, they would be related to... Um, creating the space for the Ten Commandments and the structure related to that. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So the nice. reality of that. So and anything that would, would shift around the environment or change it would be forbidden. Right. In that context. Yeah, and I love, you know, what you said in terms of these were things that uh, were used to... Um, create and, and change the environment and also um, what what do you think these things might have been used to do back in the day like if you were to put all these together who would have done all of this I thought this was all the building of the temple that, that was what was forbidden was everything that went into building the Rishkan yes exactly yeah Exactly. These were all of the uh, kind of uh, all the tasks that all the handicrafts, that's what I was looking for, uh, that were used to build the temple. So what do you make of that? Like, why should, you know, of all the things that we shouldn't do on Shabbat, why shouldn't we build a temple? seems almost counterintuitive, right? But I, I think it goes back to um, creation. That um, the world was created in six days um, the, and the temple is to house God. The Mishkan was to house God, um, a portable house of God. 
and um, I think you, I, I think my understanding is that you wouldn't want to do those things on Shabbat, on the day you rest. Right. Yeah. I love that, Judy, the, the focus back to creation uh, and where God rested. Uh, yeah. and, and the flip of that, what would be the connection between these things and uh, our time in Egypt? You know, didn't they have to um, do do all of these things? Like, I thought that they asked the people to use their skills that they had. They'd asked the people to use the skills that they had learned as slaves. And they knew things like weaving and, and you know, molding the cherubim and stuff because they had done that as slaves. So maybe the point is that then the reason why they're separate from before when you're just remembering creation and after, after you've been freed from slave of, is that now they've got something concrete before it was just a story and now it's this concrete thing that we were slaves and we were saved and now we directly owe god for this thing and these things that were all elements of our slavery we were able to use them to make a blessing to god and to bring god to our presence but now in order to be kadosh we need to set aside our slavery yeah yeah for sure very powerful yeah because uh you know, we can, if you took one of these, you know, plowing, um, it's, it's hard work. So it's both an idea of, of resting and this echo of creation, but also of um, not being slaves, of being really free. I want to just highlight uh, spotlight put a little fire on the idea of kindling a fire which is um this is the melacha that um becomes uh unpacked as far as this is the source of why it is that we don't drive or carry money or spend money um uh, do technology, it all comes back to, it can be traced back to the kindling of a fire. So I just wanted to make that note that uh, kindling the fire or extinguishing a fire, these are the two sources of why it is that we don't uh, use technology of any sort on Shabbat. And as far as why it is that we don't do uh, weddings and things like that on Shabbat, um, that has to do with, just like um, uh, Chris said, we don't change our environment. There's no status changing on Shabbat um, because to do a wedding would require writing and caring and building and, and a lot of these um, tying a knot, literally untying a knot. So any uh, contracts are not done on Shabbat. Any questions or thoughts about uh, this list? I, I've always loved this list. To me, it, uh, it kind of distills the, what creativity is um, at, its, at its essence, the kind of uh, where, uh, where we beat the environment, as Chris said. <clears throat> Rabbi, I have one thing. Yeah. Sure. And that is, uh, for uh, when you look at these as parts of speech, these are all gerunds. So they started out as verbs, and they added ing, and now they're they're essentially nouns, huh. which increases their strength of the forbidden. To me, anyway. Yeah, gerunds. Oh my God, I haven't heard that word in since I don't even know when. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing John I yeah. think it's interesting there's a lot of these that we don't do anymore that just aren't part of our lives at all right and what does that say that we don't even do these acts of creation that are forbidden yeah yeah and, and did you hear just the, and Jade she said these acts of creation um creation creativity um 
Yeah, and how far are we away from that these days of real creation and creativity? Or I don't know what real is, but um, kind of um, organic creation or creativity. Or if this was what was once normal, like for setting up a loom, like what is it that we do today that would be the similar thing? Mm -hmm. You know that. Yeah, beautiful. Susanna, I, I saw that. your hand. Oh yeah. I love that it includes preparing to weave. I feel like it really gets me, you know, because thinking about work, not just not working, but not planning your work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The thing I notice that is missing is anything to do with like riding animals or riding a cart or something like that. Like, no, they can't work. They, we already know they can't work on Shabbat. Okay, the animals can't work. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Change. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I've got a horse, so I've been over this with the rabbi. I've got a horse. Like, what can I do and not do? Can I put her harness on her to take her to another spot? I've been over that. <laughs> John, did you have a hand a new hand or yes I do. Right. Uh, it's easy to look at these as agricultural activities from way back in the day, but you can take any one of these and put it in your life today. Yeah. They all work. Just give a little bit uh more of an interpretation with your imagination and you see why these are all forbidden and then you can add a whole bunch to it. Yeah. And, and for example, like, um, uh, um, where's the one that always kind of blows my mind? Um, like many people don't shower on Shabbat because um, the towel would absorb. And I'm looking to see which one that falls under. Um, I think it has to do, Chris, did you have an idea? Yeah, I was thinking like dying because it would absorb the- Right, yeah, the I think maybe. that's, I think that's it. And also um, some people don't use sponges on Shabbat. Mm. Some people uh, don't separate things. So like making a cup of tea, first of all, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't dye the water um, Debbie, I see your hand. When, when you dry yourself with a towel, you're trapping water. Right, trapping. Yeah, cool. And um, also, um, people don't set up tables on Shabbat because um, it's like making a, a tent. And, um, you know, you don't ride a, a bike on Shabbat because you might, the bike might break and then you would have to fix it. The reason you don't play instruments on Shabbat is the same idea. Um, so there's a lot here. We could just have a grand old time with all of this. It's super, super beautiful. Um, just another couple, I'm not going to do the, the language, but I just want you to kind of have the clear specific. So um, Shabbat starts 18 minutes before sunset on Friday, and it ends an hour after sunset on Saturday, or when three stars are visible. And do folks know kind of the end of Shabbat, what, what it's called? What is the act that's done? Habdallah. Havdala, yep. And if you think about it, the um, the symbols are the same. Um, there's light and wine, and instead of the challah, there's spices. But there's like this bookend of uh, these rituals that mark the the beginning and the end. So I want to take us now to um, the handout that I shared. So um, we could go through a little bit of that and think about how is it that we might kind of bring some of this. Oh, I wanted to show you this one really cool um, image just as we transition, because I think it's great to see. I love when people make art out of 
Jewish anything. So this is the idea of um, uh, Zachor, of remembering Shabbat. So here, you know, the simple, what do you remember to buy? What do you remember to do? Uh, just a really cool illustration. Do, what I heard someone say? No, I'm just talking to myself. Sorry, just reading some of the uh, the drawings. Yeah, and you know, I love this kind of journal of how do we then remember Shabbat? You know, what stands out for us? It's kind of cool to think about. And then this is the the one for. Um, uh, let's see, that was Zahor. So this one is the Shamor. Just show you this. Here is to guard. All the kind of uh, do's and don'ts. Disconnect to reconnect. I love this quote from uh, Rabbi Heschel here. Save for well to manual work, the world has already been created and will survive without your help. <laughs> That's very humbling, I think. <laughs> Sobering, perhaps, is, is more like it. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the, to the handout and do a little bit of study together on kind of, you know, what could this look like in our homes? Um, first of all, I know Craig and Leslie shared, you know, what, what it might look like in their house. Does anyone else have kind of a, a Shabbat practice that they... Uh, find really meaningful or special that you look forward to. Could be very simple. I had a friend who just changed his bathroom soap <laughs> and that was his Shabbat soap. It was like a big ritual for him. Hmm. Some people change the sheets <laughs> for Shabbat. It's really nice. I, I just set aside Friday to do cleaning and laundry and have a different um, different tablecloth and napkins. And I, I, I'm I little at a time keeping adding things in. I've got a nice, really nice candle set and different things. Beautiful. Yeah, the idea is just to switch it up. Any little change that you could do. Great. Yeah, Debbie. Oops, let me... Yeah, there we go, on mute. We still can't hear you, Debbie, you're still muted. There we go, yep. Uh, when my youngest and I lived nearby each other, uh, there was no oven for uh, when they put the uh, hollow together and so it would show up unbaked at my apartment and would get to visit. That's amazing. I love that. It's like talk about yeast rising. That's so cool. John. Yes, I remember once when you said that the, the phone, our phones, uh, is the new God. So I enjoy uh, putting it in the drawer for that something. 25 hours. Yeah. So it's something to look forward to and it's a big deal. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a, an organization that made uh, cell phone sleeping bags that you put your cell phone in this little sack. So yeah. Uh, Great. So let's look together at um, a couple of these sources. We've kind of talked a little bit around um, some of them. Um, Rabbi Heschel is always just, he's my kind of go-to um, 
but I, I think the idea here of, um, you know, the, the humility to, um, like this sentence right here, the world has our hands, but our soul belongs to someone else. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, you could just like make a bumper sticker or something out of that. It's just so powerful. Um, the recognition that it's, it's not just a nice thing, but there's an urgency, um, a, like a spiritual urgency about Shabbat. I think that that is very profound. And, um, and then this piece by Rabbi uh, Yitz Greenberg is, is also very powerful that, um, um, let's just read this one actually. Savia, do you wanna read it? Sure, The Jewish Way, Living the Holidays by Rabbi Irving Greenberg. The Shabbat is the foretaste of the messianic redemption. But even as this enclave of perfection is carved out in the, re in the realm of time, the world goes on as usual in the realm of the surrounding space. That is why Shabbat needs a community in order to be credible. By an act of will, the community creates this sacred time and space and agrees to live by its rules. For 1900 years, before saying grace after meals on weekdays, Jews in the exile chanted Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there he sat down and wept when we remember Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? But on Shabbat, as the sun set and the power of evil was shut out, Jews were transported in their imagination to a perfect rebuilt Jerusalem. It was so real to them. Oops. Sorry, there's a, um, something blocking my screen. Um, Oops, did it. Uh, there I go, thank okay. you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was so real to them that on this day, before saying grace, they sang Psalm 126. When the Lord returned us to Zion, we lived as in a dream. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongue flowed with song. Yeah, so here the, the historical kind of... Um, reclamation really of um, realizing that that Shabbat was dreamed about um, when we were in exile uh, and then in some ways uh, when you know when not only Israel was created or you know when Jews returned to Israel but um, even today we we still uh, there's a longing and a yearning that is both like fulfilled and hoped for through Shabbat. Uh, anybody, any have, anyone have any thoughts about that text? Gleanings or insights? I really love the imagery of my mouth being filled with laughter and my tongue flowing with song. I think that's really beautiful poetry. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Um, so uh, essentially there's, there's a progression. I'm going to just show you one kind of overview, which I think is, is helpful to just kind of see the, the moves of Shabbat. Um, so here on, sorry, I'm going between a slide deck. So on Friday night, um, here's the progression. Light, invite, um, that's with Shalom Aleichem, to bless um, the wine. We always start with wine. And then to make a lachayim, a kiddush, then we wash um, and we share hala and we sing and we give thanks. So there's a really very sleek 
progression and then Shabbat day and then Havdalah, which literally means the separation. So it's in these kind of essential uh, acts, and we could add ing to make them gerunds mm -hmm. just for fun, um, that it all happens. So really there's a simplicity about Shabbat that is also just beautiful to kind of realize that um, you can make Shabbat anywhere. I've made it on a, I remember making it on a park bench in, in Central Park with, um, if you don't have candles, you can actually say the blessing over any source of illumination. And we drank, a, I don't know, I think we drank a soda pop and I don't know, somebody had a pretzel, you know, from a, from a cart. Um, so you don't need much, uh, but really there's a lot of magic as we know that happens in, um, in the ritual of Shabbat. So I'm gonna look with us at the sources here. Uh, I think I was a little over uh, excited about switching between all these slide decks. I think I'm gonna simplify next time. So um, this is a powerful piece that I, I think about a lot um, of, you know, what is the meal about itself? You know, why is it that we have a meal? Does somebody want to read this first text from the Talmud? Barry, do you want to read it? Okay. Um, Rabbi Yohanan and Rish Lakish both say the following. When the temple is standing, the altar atones for a person. Now that the temple has been destroyed, it is a person's table that atones for him or her. Great, and, and what do you make of that, Barry, or anyone? Well, I take it that uh, God's spirit is, is everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and John, I see your hand. Yes, it also contains the transition from biblical uh, Judaism to uh, rabbinical Judaism, that transition period after the, when the home became the center. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and this is, I think, a really important uh, source text to think about that, um, you know, we, we as Jews, we don't just go off into a cave or um, um, sit on top of a mountain by ourselves and chant, um, although both of those things sound very nice. Um, we are a home-based people, and the table is the altar of our, of our home sanctuary. It's like a very profound thought that all the table, like your dining, picture your dining room table or your kitchen table, whatever it is, that is uh, the altar. That's where sacrifices, AKA our food are offered and consumed. It's where we gather. It's also where community, whether it's your two people community or larger, you know, extended family, but it's where yes. people come together. Awesome. So Leslie, if you'll read the, the Rashi on that. Uh, How does the table atone? Through inviting guests. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We have friends. We we create the, the party, whatever it looks like. Yeah. Um, does somebody want to read this Mishnah? I'll continue, I guess. Perfect. Rabbi Simon would say, they who eat together at a table and do not speak words of Torah 
it is as if they had had eaten sacrifices to the idols. But when three people eat at a table and speak words of Torah, it is if they have eaten at God's table, as it states, this is the table that is before God, Ezekiel 41, 22. Right. Yeah. So when we, what, what do you all make of this text? What is the comparison between? Um, Judaism and ancient polytheism and what um, would go on at the home table or yeah. viewing that with meaning in a Jewish context that that this text is saying isn't in the polytheistic context or the pagan context. Yeah. Wow, Chris, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Did you like do a PhD on something I should know about? <laughs> yeah, actually, I, 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 I teach ancient Mediterranean um, art and art. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And I just finished teaching a Jewish art class today was our last day. So oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, definitely you were I could I'm feel, in the zone right now. <laughs> I could feel that. Yeah. What do you think? Like dial that in a little bit. Like what would that look like, these two different tables? Um one would be um, giving meaning to sort of, you know, daily life through um, referencing the Torah and living Jewishly and the other, it would be absent. Yeah. So it wouldn't be as meaningful and it wouldn't be, it says that it's before God. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't, um, wouldn't have that meaning attached to it. Yeah. And, and how would Chris or somebody else, um, how is this, how would you translate that for our eating experience today, whether it's Shabbat or, or just anything? What would the comparison be? Well, just when you, when you, maybe when you sort of eating mindlessly in front of the TV and not talking or not being with people or just not being mindful when you're eating, um, the things you're eating or how things came to come to your your table totally. you know just yeah. that, that mindfulness that I guess how we would say it now in the 21st century yeah absolutely yeah do you think about um oh Janine yeah Go I, ahead. I was thinking of the blessings exactly like the blessing um one's food would be an a you know um yeah that that's what comes to my mind that that would be different absolutely yeah and the specifics of the blessings because other people certainly would use blessings but they they're different right yeah yeah and and to speak a word of torah people are um especially within more traditional or observant communities like someone has to give a divar torah at the Shabbat table. Okay. It's like you, someone has to even just say the name of the Torah portion or something, tell a joke, or, you know, that's Torah specific, but it's a, it's taken quite seriously that uh, on Shabbat, there has to be a bissel of Torah, uh, a little bit of Torah, uh, which I've always found very, it, it kind of um, elevates everything. You know, it would be like, um, I don't know, you know, instead of drinking wine out of a Dixie cup, you know, you put it in a gorgeous glass. It's, it's just a game changer. You know, it elevates the wine, it elevates the experience, it elevates everything. So I know we just have a couple of moments. I just wanted to give that little example of, you know, what is the food about? But what you'll see um, going forward are some wonderful pieces. Um, this is by Rabbi Steve Greenberg, who's a, a friend and a colleague. Um, he was part of the, the important movie, uh, Trembling Before God. 
if you haven't seen that, that's another one that prayed up there with the big Lebowski um, to make sure you see. Um, beautiful description of what is Shabbat to him and his family. And then um, what you'll see on this next page is the kind of progression of how do we get ready? You know, what, what does that really mean to uh, prepare to weave, uh, so to speak? And, and how could we think about Shabbat as, as not just, you know, the 24 hours or 25 hours that it is, but uh, the preparation. And people say, actually, you start preparing for Shabbat on Wednesday. You can start wishing people Shabbat Shalom, and you can make uh, Havdalah up till Tuesday. And the idea is that your whole week uh, orients around Shabbat. And it's a beautiful, uh, this is a great insight into the kind of economics of, of Jewish ritual and, and how do we prioritize. Um, so you'll see this, this handout just has some awesome uh, text to really explore and, uh, you know, maybe print this out and put it uh, next to your, your challah cover or your Shabbat tablecloth or something like that. Um, and um, I just want to leave a couple, I guess, a minute or so of, you know, any insights that you're taking away or something that you want to try or explore or a text that we didn't get to that you loved. I, I just really enjoyed the last thing you said where you can, you can start uh, preparing on Wednesday for Shabbat and then run Havdalah till uh, Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> so you're always in the zone there. Totally. Always in the zone. Yeah, it's a, it's a special thing. And some people like, you know, when they go shopping on Wednesday, they'll think about, okay, for Shabbat, I'm going to you know, buy this babka, but I'm not going to eat it until <laughs> Shabbat or whatever it is. You know, you save a special treat basically for Shabbat. Oh, you both <laughs> 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 All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for being together. And um, I'll see you all next week, I hope. Um, thank feel you. Feel free to invite friends or family. Anybody's welcome. Yeah, get well soon. Yeah. Get Thank well. you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. It's Wednesday. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. John, did you say something? I didn't hear you. What is next week's session? Um, that's a good question. I can't remember what I said was next. <laughs> Does anybody remember? It's in the... Uh, it's in the... Um, in the email. Um, okay. Yeah, I can look here and go. Uh, blessings, actually. Yeah. Okay, Lila Tove, everybody, take good care. Bye-bye. Uh, Thank you. Bye-bye.